Glory to Jesus Christ, Yehoshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2. And as I was reading this chapter, the Holy Spirit was telling me something very important. The Holy Spirit was teaching me about the quest that we are to embark on when we are truly seeking the Lord. But he showed it to me from a different perspective. The Lord was telling me, Have you not seen the zeal of Herod in the way that he sought me out? You see, Herod was seeking the Lord unto death to destroy him. But nonetheless, he was embarked on a quest to find him. And do we have the same zeal when we look for the Lord, not to kill him, but rather to worship him in spirit and in truth? Look at Herod. You see, Herod, when the wise man came to him, saying that they had seen the star of the child Jesus, Yehoshua, they told Herod, and they asked, Where is the child that we may worship him? And it is written that when Herod heard these things, he was troubled. And this is the image of someone hearing about the gospel. When you first hear about the Lord Jesus, when you hear about the news of him and the good news of his sacrifice for you, and the good news of the offer of salvation and eternal life, that he is offering you as a gift. When you hear about it, what is your reaction? You see, Herod, when he hears about it, he does not remain indifferent to it. He is troubled. In other words, it cuts to his heart. Now the Lord says, those who are my sheep, they hear my voice, they recognize it, and they follow me. Now Herod likewise heard a voice in his heart, but it was not a voice that he was going to follow. It was a voice that he was going to seek out so that he could destroy the speaker of it. Alleluia. And so Herod hears the voice and is troubled. Now the gospel does tell us, And do not act as though you had not heard. Rather, enter into my rest, that ye may cease to perform the evil works of your flesh. Enter into my rest. So Herod heard the word. We hear the gospel. And there is a reaction on the inside. Herod was troubled. But every man is to feel compelled to listen to that message and to seek to understand it further. Alleluia. You can read about these things. In the first three verses. And now in verse 4, the second thing that Herod does, he gathers the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, and he demands of them where Christ should be born. You see, after hearing, some will come to have faith. Now Herod heard about the news of Christ, and the second thing he does is he expresses the type of faith that he has. But his faith is not faith in eternal life through Christ. But the faith that he has is that he is called to now seek and destroy Jesus Christ. You see, John tells us in 1 John chapter 4 that the spirit of Antichrist, it is not a novel thing. And already here we see the spirit of Antichrist manifesting through Herod and it seeks to destroy Christ himself and everything that stands for Christ. And so how does Herod do this? Well, he goes to the people who know. He goes to the people who have knowledge and he asks them, where should the child be born? According to the prophecies that were spoken, you who have this knowledge, I ask of you, where should the child be born? And because they have knowledge, they're able to provide him with an accurate answer. Verse 5, And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, 
for thus it is written by the prophet. You see, Jesus, when sometimes he was asked questions, he told the people, Have ye not read in the scriptures? Have ye not read in the scriptures? The scriptures, they testify of me. Have ye not read in the scriptures? Keep the word close to your heart. Meditate this word day and night, and it will be well for you. Now, Herod went to those who knew the scriptures. They may not have understood them spiritually, but they had knowledge of them intellectually. And so they would be able to give him an answer that would be objectively correct. And so they tell him, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor, O oh, Alleluia, that shall rule my people Israel. Magnificent Lord. And so now he gets an answer. He gets specific information about our king, the one who would rise up from the tribe of Judah. Oh, magnificent. And the important thing here is that Herod is diligent in terms of finding out more about Jesus. You see, it is not sufficient to hear and to have a reaction inside, feeling compelled to listen to that word or being cut to the heart and wanting to destroy that word. Remember how those who stoned Stephen, they were cut to the heart and they sought to destroy Stephen. Others heard the word, like the Samaritan woman, and they wanted to follow that word because they felt compelled to listen to that voice and it was pleasant to them in their heart and in their spirit. But there has to be a reaction. And Herod, after he is cut to the heart, what does he do? He seeks those who have knowledge about the word and he asks them question so that he can learn from them and get more information and acquire knowledge you see proverbs we are taught to seek wisdom seek knowledge and understanding seek these things and here we see herod in his wickedness and evil he still displays the proper diligence in terms of a method to discover the Lord and know more about Him. And that's a teaching to us. You see, the scriptures were written for our instruction. And so let us continue in verse 7. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise man, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. You see, he goes to the scriptures, asking those who know the scriptures to fill him in on the information about Christ, then he goes to the witnesses. He goes to those who have seen. Remember how we have victory over the devil. Amongst other things, by way of the testimony that we have of the one true living God. Oh, alleluia. And so the Lord calls us to be witnesses. Why? Because the world who is in darkness will come to us as a light shining in darkness, that we may communicate to them the light that we have received from the one who is the light who came into the world, the one who lights every man that cometh into this world, the light of Jesus Christ, the Mashiach, the one who has in him life, for in the Son is life. He who hath the Son hath life. And so we are called to be witnesses. Go and be my witnesses unto the ends of the earth. Alleluia. And so in verse 7, Herod went to the wise man and he inquired of them how diligently what time the star appeared. You see, he, he had an attentive ear to the testimony of those who saw now, some will have that attentive ear. We spoke earlier of the Samaritan woman. She listened to Jesus carefully. And she let his words penetrate her. And so she paid attention. To some, we are the flavor of life unto life. 
but to others we are the fragrance of death unto death. Some will receive this message, some will reject it. Now Herod sought witnesses, and he sought witnesses who were able to describe what they saw with precision, because we are witnesses of that which we know and have experienced with the Lord. 1 John chapter 1, the word was manifested, and we laid eyes on it, we saw it, we examined it, and touched it with our hands, and we heard it. Alleluia. So these witnesses were able to give an account. And this is why as witnesses who have met the Lord in one way or another, we can witness to others about the things which we have seen and heard. Alleluia. Magnificent Jesus Christ, King Eternal. Verse 8, And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. So here we have the image of Herod taking action. You see, we must not be hearers only but doers of the word. When you hear the word and have a favorable reaction to it in that you receive it, you hear the word, faith cometh by hearing, but then you must not only hear and believe, but you must also be a doer. This is why Jesus also told those who had believed, if ye continue in my words, then truly will ye be my disciples. So there is a further step after believing to continue in his words. As James explains, therefore, in chapter 1 of his general epistle, be ye not simply hearers, but doers of the word. So Herod is not only a hearer. Yes, he heard about all these things, about a star having been seen, and about the birth of a child he heard. But he was also a doer, you see. Once he was cut to the heart, he did not stop there. He took actions. He went to see those who had knowledge about the law, and he questioned them diligently, and he sought out information. He got instruction. And when he got confirmation about the knowledge that he wanted to receive, he sought to perfect it by seeking witnesses who could give an added layer of understanding to the information that he already had acquired. And then what did he do? He sent, he sent people to now go on the ground, boots on the ground. He sent people to his field to work in the field and to work in the crops to find out about a certain plant to find out where was rooted a certain plant that was going to become a tree of life. And so he sent them to Bethlehem, and he told them, search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, give me word. And so we ourselves, being doers, we go to the word, and we read the scriptures. And though the Lord teaches us all things, 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, we have an anointing that teaches us all things. We also know that there are people established as teachers who can help us further our understanding. And the Lord teaches us through them as well. And when we receive that instruction, we are edified. Now, at times, even the Lord may send people to us, coming across our path, and these people turn out to be our teachers for a time. Remember the Ethiopian eunuch. Philip was sent to him to provide an enlightenment, and then their relationship ended. But that short partnership was the spark needed by the Ethiopian eunuch. There are teachers with whom we walk for a time, and then the Lord will have us move in a different direction. So now Herod sought out with boots on the ground that people would go and find Christ and give him news of Christ so that he could worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Now he is lying. 
because he is acting here on behalf of the devil. John 8, 44. You are of your father the devil, and he is a liar from the beginning. He lies naturally. And so where Herod says he wants to worship Christ, he's actually looking to destroy him. And so verse 8, And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. And so what he's doing, he's now trying to develop a relationship with the child. He wants to know the child, to meet him, to have an encounter with him. And that's the image of us having to seek the Lord personally, to know him personally, so that we can have our own encounter with him at the flaming bush. We have heard, but now we wish to see. Like Job, I heard about thee, Lord, now I have seen you. Herod, having heard of the Lord, now wanted to have a personal encounter with him, to know him personally. And so you do not want to know Christ through another man, but you want to know Christ directly. In the same manner, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 teaches us that there is no intermediate between ourselves and God, but through Christ. He's our sole intermediate. Through Christ. Seek Christ and not men. Why? You have been bought with a price. Be ye not therefore servants of men. Are you seeking Christ by being attached to a certain individual to whom you are always lending an ear even before you lend an ear to the Lord himself? Be careful about idolatry. The Lord is a jealous God and you must seek him because he gives his glory to no one. Make sure that no man has become your God. And so Herod seeks to know Christ personally. He's heard the witness, the testimony of him by way of the wise man, but he wants to meet him now. Verse 9. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. See, now when you're looking for truth, there are going to be signs that the Lord is going to orchestrate to lead you to that truth. Remember back in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, he created the stars, and they will be for signs and seasons. Further, he told the Pharisees, ye hypocrites, ye can look at the stars, and you can understand them. But how is it that ye cannot understand the spiritual things that I'm trying to make you understand? How is it that you cannot understand the seasons? See? And this is an image of people, they see the light, they see the star, but they don't want to receive the truth that is stemming from it. They don't want to receive the light that is being emitted from that star. They would rather interpret it the way they want and have it become a false light unto them. But for those who recognize that light and follow that star, as one is to follow the good shepherd, then all will be well with them. Seek ye me, and you will find me. Verse 10. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy, because he is the one who gives peace, our great Lord. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down, oh, at the name of Jesus, Every knee bows, and every tongue confesses that he is Lord, and they worshipped him in spirit and in truth. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh, because he is a great king. And later on, in John chapter 12, Mary will take a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and she will anoint his feet and wipe his feet with her hair. You see, Yoshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, is worth our good praise and our precious things and our true worship, and he deserves the best. And the best thing he says we can offer him 
is ourselves as a precious sacrifice unto him, to give him our lives, to give up our worldly life and the desires of this world by way of our flesh, to give all that up for him. In other words, to pick up our cross and crucify the flesh that it may no longer act in this world in a carnal way and to follow him. And this way will we be perfect, selling everything that we have and giving up on all the things that we have in this world and to follow him, walking by the Spirit, no one knowing where we are coming from nor where we are going. John 3, 8. And so they gave him the best, and they gave him precious treasures. Verse 12, And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. You see, God makes a difference between he who serveth him and he who serveth him not. Now, the wise man had a heart that was being genuine, in their desire to encounter the Lord and to worship Him. And so they were allowed to come in His presence and do that. They were able to humble themselves before Him, and the desire of their heart was pure. But as for Herod, his heart was evil, and he sought Him, but he sought Him with evil intentions, and therefore he was not allowed at that time to go and see the Lord, to have his encounter with him. And so thus far, brothers and sisters, what have we seen? We have seen Herod being cut to the heart by the news of Jesus Christ. But he did not remain only a hearer. He took steps, concrete actions and measures. He went to see the chief priests and the scribes to see what was written in Scripture concerning this child, Jesus. He received instruction, and then he went and sought out witnesses who had a testimony to give concerning this same Jesus. And then he took further measures. He even sent out the wise man and demanded that they would give him a report so that he could have news of where the child was so that he could go and have a personal relationship with the child. Now, as we have established, he was looking for him unto evil, to kill him. But it is nonetheless a model for us to see that once we hear the word, we must not stay idle, but rather if it is something we can receive in our heart and we feel compelled to hear it and to enter into the Lord's rest, then do we also have to take actions and measures concerning this sentiment that we have toward the Lord. Because faith cometh by hearing, but then we have to be doers of the word and not only hearers. Therefore do we also go to Scripture, because the Scriptures, as Jesus said, they testify of me. And so we seek out the Scriptures, and we keep them close to our heart, so that we may know the Lord so that we may not sin against him. And then we also hear people's testimonies, and we are edified by their testimonies. And for some, it may even be that they hear testimonies which actually bring them to the Lord, to where they will then seek out the Lord for themselves in Scripture, and they will have their own testimony to give. And so we see the power of testimony. And afterwards, Herod sought to send people so that he could find Christ. Well, we have to embark on a quest also to go and find Christ. But we must not be of those who send other men to find Christ for us, but rather we must be ourselves, the very wise men who went on foot themselves to go and meet the Lord. We must go on that journey through the desert ourselves to go and find the Lord. We must meet Him personally at the flaming bush. And so Herod, he had that desire to know the Lord personally. We must have it likewise. And when we meet him, when we go in the Holy of Holies, then do we have that intimate encounter with the Lord where we can worship him in spirit and in truth and fall down before him and worship him. As I did when I encountered him out of body and was made to bow before him 
Jesus the Almighty. And also we see, brothers and sisters, that when the wise men found him, they gave him the best of what they had, which is the image of us giving ourselves over to the Lord, completely, totally giving up on the things of this world and this life, not loving our lives, even unto death, that we may find our life, our life which is eternal, such a life being in the Son, because he who hath the Son hath life. Alleluia. We continue now in verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. You see how the Lord speaks to us in dreams. When man is fast asleep, the Lord revealeth to him secrets. And so Joseph received information. The Lord watches over us. He is our shield and buckler. And so when there is a danger lurking around us, you see the Lord takes measures to inform his servants about what they have to do because he is also known the Lord as the counselor. Amen? And we are told again in this verse 13 that Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. You see that evil men, we have just discussed it, evil men also, they become seekers. They seek after. You remember how Saul was seeking after David. Do you remember how Haman, in the book of Esther, he sought Mordecai, a way to destroy him? There are evil people who will seek you out because they want to destroy you. But it is likewise at the same time an image for us to be reminded that we have to seek the Lord also in our own walk concerning Him. And even once we have come to be converted, after our true conversion, being born from above, born again, we still have to seek the Lord. Once we have gotten past the beggarly elements, as Paul says, we have to move on now to meet to the deep waters of the Word to continue to discover more and more about the Lord, whose substance cannot be contained even by the heavens. Verse 14, When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise man, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth, and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise man. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation, and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they are not. And you see the reaction here by Herod? Once he realizes that he has failed to find the child, once his quest to find life, to find truth, fails, then is he left with death. Because if there is a separation from the Lord, there remains only death. And so the output of his quest, the output of his belief, the output of his knowledge of Christ, a knowledge that is corrupt of Christ, a knowledge that is not rooted in love about Christ, it produces death. He is separated from the Lord and from the love of the Lord. And what do his works become? Works of abomination. Works that abide in death. Because you see, you cannot serve two masters. You will either serve the one or the other. And if he is not serving Christ, whom he has failed to encounter and develop a personal relationship with, then he's left with the devil. And the devil is the one who hath power over death. 
And now we see Herod. His works become dead. His works reside and abide in death. And he slaughters. He slains those innocent children because he is wroth that he has not been able to destroy Yeshua HaMashiach himself, the child Jesus. And here we have the image of one man by way of whom many come to perish, whereas by the life of one child, many will live. Life will abound to many, more than those who perished here in the flesh. Life will abound to even more people because that one child survived and lived on. Now, I will admit that when I read this uh, at one point, I asked the Lord, Lord, how is it that you prescribed, knowing all things, that these children would die, many of them, so that you would live being one person? And the Lord scolded me, and he told me, I have died for every man that cometh into this world, and I have carried all their sins on my shoulder. Don't you ever dare tell me that people have died for me as martyrs, because I have died for everyone. And I repented and understood why. Jeremiah in chapter 12 says, Very prudently, Lord, I know that your judgments are right and correct, but if I may, I would like to just ask the question about your judgments. Or again, like Abraham, when he spoke to the Lord and said, Let not the Lord be angry against me, Lord. But I would just like to ask one question, if it be possible. You see, we have to be very careful in questioning the ways of the Lord. And so I asked the question, Lord, how is it that these die so that you may live? And he was very quick. To tell me, I have died even for every man. And therefore, if people die as martyrs, is it not a small thing compared to what I have done? For I have redeemed even them who die for me in the flesh. And they find life through me because I lived on to then be offered a perfect sacrifice. Oh, magnificent is our Lord. And so here we have a powerful image. Babies died in the flesh so that baby Jesus would live in the flesh. But this image further illustrates how when people die martyrs for the cause of Christ, babies died in the flesh so that Christ in the flesh could live. But those who die martyrs in the flesh, they die so that the testimony of Christ may live on. Because when they die martyrs, they show that by accepting to die for their testimony, they are validating that their testimony is correct. They are validating that their testimony has worth because they preach by their testimony that they will love life, eternal life, more than their earthly life. But to confirm this, you must be willing to prove that you're willing to die in the flesh to inherit eternal life. And so, people who die as martyrs, their testimony is validated by their martyrdom. And so, the Lord was explaining to me, when someone dies as a martyr in the flesh, they are establishing their testimony about the Lord, and thereby they are glorifying the Lord. So, the testimony of Christ lives on by way of those who die as martyrs, while here... The physical death of the babies allows the physical baby Jesus to live. And the death of martyrs today allows the spiritual message of life of Jesus to live. Do you see the image here? And further, that Jesus died for all. And that it is a small thing that some must die martyrs for him. That being said, he is not unjust to forget everything that is done for him, and there is a reward for all of them who die as martyrs. Verse 19, But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, 
and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. Do you see the advice of the Lord here, the counselor? He's saying, the only time that you can now go back to a place where you were sought out to be killed is when those who were attempting to kill you are themselves dead. Do you remember now we spoke about David and Saul? It is only once Saul died and perished that David was relieved of the persecution that was being exacted by Saul, who constantly chased him. It was only when Haman was hung on the gallows, prepared for Mordecai, that Mordecai had rest from the persecution that Haman was exacting concerning him. And so there are persecutors. It is only when they die that you have peace from them. Now, if we go in the beginning, when the Egyptians were drowned in the sea, that is the moment when the people had rest from them and from Pharaoh. But Pharaoh sought them out in the way Herod sought Christ. But it's only after that they died and perished in the sea that the people of the Lord had peace. So the seekers, those who seek you unto evil, it is when they perish that you are delivered from them and their persecution. Or, conversely, when you yourself die in the flesh and they no longer have control over your spirit because they can kill your body but not your spirit. And so for the babies who perished, they were no longer going to be persecuted. But as far as their spirit, their soul, it returned to God who gave it. And where they are now, no human persecutor can get to them. And so what am I saying? I'm saying that those who seek you unto evil, when they perish, you have peace. And if you perish because they catch you, and they can no longer torment you because they cannot kill your spirit. Verse 21, And he arose and took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, He shall be called a Nazarene. Now when one enemy falls, there's another. Because as we know, 1 Peter 5, 8, the devil roams about continually, seeking whom he can devour. And so when a first persecutor perishes, there is yet another. But the good news is this. If we are with the Lord, who can be against us? So glory to Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. He shall be called a Nazarene. And so again, we are brought to Scripture. We are brought to the prophecies that were written in the Scriptures here to close out this chapter. And so, brothers and sisters, this is what I wanted to share with you concerning Matthew chapter 2 as I was meditating upon it. And we have seen that it is possible for the wicked to seek for the Lord. But likewise, we who are his flock, the sheep of his flock, we have to seek him diligently as Herod, being wicked, sought him diligently. And that implies reading the word hearing testimonies and fellowshipping with other sheep of the flock who have their own testimonies that will encourage us and share about their own personal experience with the Lord. And then we must be doers, not only hearers, but doers of good works, which good works we are zealous about, which good works have been prepared for us since past eternity that we may walk therein. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. And then, having believed, we must not stop there because we have to continue in His words so that we may truly be His disciples. And that implies that we continue to seek Him even though we have believed, so that we may come to understand Him in a more profound manner, so that we have a personal relationship with Him and continue to develop it and get to understand uh, the deeper substance of the word and not remain at the beggarly elements of the faith. 
And in doing that, certainly, there will be opposition. There will be an Herod. There will be a soul. But being rooted in the Lord and being rooted in truth, we know that being light, we will excel darkness. Now, we also saw the idea that even though some die as martyrs, let us never forget that there is one who is the ultimate martyr, and that is Jesus Christ himself, Yeshua HaMashiach, who was crucified to bear all the transgressions of everyone to reconcile us unto him by the price of his precious blood that he paid. And lastly, we saw that though we die, they have no power, our persecutors, over our spirit and that at times they will die before we do. And it is only at that time that we will have peace from them because they are relentless in pursuing us. It is the persecution that we must learn to manage because the Lord did warn us, Acts 14, 22, in this world you will have many tribulations and it is by way of much affliction that you will get to the kingdom. And we must not be as those who not having roots deep enough that we now wither away because of the affairs of this life, because of the persecution, because of the riches of this world, that we abandon the faith, we must continue on. And so this is the message, brothers and sisters, that I was going to share with you today concerning the faith, that we must persevere and deepen our relationship with the Mashiach, and continue to seek his truth in his words and by way of fellowship with one another. May you all be blessed in the mighty name of Yoshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen.